Welcome to today's episode, Hope is Not Lost. I wanted to do this episode as kind of a part two to It Gets Better, I Promise. I actually felt a little disappointed in that last episode. I didn't feel like it was what I wanted it to be. It didn't turn out quite like I wanted it. And that was a little frustrating, so I just decided to do a part two. And then in addition to that, I went to Elder and Sister Holland's Worldwide Devotional on January 3rd. What's 11 minus 7? January 4th. (laughs) So I went to their devotional last week on Sunday and it was really, really good. And I feel like it was life-changing in a way that I didn't know that I needed, but it was really wonderful and really, really great to have. So I'm really grateful for that. I am also grateful that Whitney, she's been on this podcast two episodes now, she came with me so we drove down together because it was in St. George. We had a really good conversation both ways, driving down and driving back up and so I had a lot of fun and really enjoyed her company. And one thing about Whitney is that she's a very deep person and so I could talk about what we just heard and what we just learned and discuss that with her rather than just, you know, listening to music on the way home. I don't think we listened to music at all. We just kind of talked, so it was really fun. Like I said in last episode, well, not this most recent last episode, but the one, It Gets Better, I Promise, I talked about how I have been there in the depths of despair and have really struggled before. And I've come out of that and have been really happy and really mentally well. And I feel like I definitely discussed how I have been in the trenches, but I didn't really get to the part where I'm doing well and how hope is not lost. And so today I wanted to focus more on that, that hope is not lost and that it does get better. And one of the things that was kind of awesome was that Elder and Sister Holland's whole topic of the Worldwide Devotional was on hope. And how hope is not lost and how hope is there and it always will be there. It's interesting to me, definitely not a coincidence, that I had decided to talk about hope and talk about it getting better and so on. And I hadn't recorded my episode yet and then I went down to St. George to listen to Elder and Sister Holland. And they talked about hope too. So I know that I'm on track for what I should be talking about and what is needed in today's world because they addressed the literal world and talked about hope. And I really, really enjoyed it. One of the fun things about going in person to a worldwide devotional, first of all, world wide. I feel like that's insane and crazy. All over the United States, all over the seas, all over the country, like everywhere, worldwide. And then also in addition to that, being in person was awesome because I was able to sit at an angle where I could see the teleprompter and it was so cool to see what was coming and what he was going to say or what she was going to say before they said it. I even started writing quotes down that they were going to say before they even said it. It was just so cool. It was like having subtitles and I literally thought it was the best thing ever in the whole world. So if you ever have the opportunity to go in person to a worldwide devotional, I would say go. One of the other cool things about going in person is with the teleprompter, you could see the ad lib that they added. For example, he talked about hope is never lost and light always conquers darkness forever and ever and ever. And that was not on the teleprompter. The only thing that was on the teleprompter was light always conquers darkness. One other thing that I really loved with the teleprompter is it had the word humor on there in brackets in a different color. And then it just had four bullet points. He told a story and he told a few jokes with just some bullet points to remind him what he was going to say. And then afterwards he said, I bet the translators are frantically trying to figure all that. And I think at the time, if I hadn't been there in person, I would have been like, wow, so they really do memorize their talks and just speak it all. But in that case, he just had humor written down and then four bullet points to remind him what to say. But everything else actually was written down word for word. And then they added things here and there, little word changes and so on, just to make it natural and stuff. 
I felt a little bit bad for Sister Holland. She seemed very nervous. And rather than looking up at the teleprompters, because there were three TVs set up on the ground, she looked down at the iPad in front of her, which is totally understandable. I just felt bad that she was a little nervous. But obviously, Elder Holland's been doing it for a long time, so he was very comfortable in reading the teleprompters and in talking to big crowds of people. It's only been more recently that they have included the wives and these worldwide devotionals and so on, which is really cool. I really love that they do that. I think it's extremely important. It sends a great message that couples do things together. And Elder Holland has Sister Holland in his life, and she's been a very influential person in who he is, and vice versa. And so I think it's awesome that the wives talk as well. They've been doing that for some time now, and I think it's just wonderful. In 2022, when President Nelson spoke, his wife also spoke. And then in 2018, when he had Hope of Israel devotional Wendy Nelson also spoke again, and I think it adds so much more to the devotional when both the wife and the husband speak, especially when they're united and they talk together. I think it's awesome. So anyway, I was there at the devotional. It was really cool, really amazing. I recommend it 100%. really glad I went. I took a ton of notes on my phone. I felt a little bit bad for having my phone out, but I had an innocent motive. It's not like I was trying to be evil or texting someone and not paying attention. I was trying to retain as much information as I could by taking notes and by writing down spiritual promptings and so on. And like I said before, it was so cool to see what they were going to say on the teleprompter and begin writing the wonderful, marvelous quotes down before they even said it. And one of the things that I really, really loved is he said, Hope is the privilege of everyone who believes. I loved that. I think he was stating that hope is not for the one individual. It is for all who choose to believe and everyone who chooses to have faith and have hope. Because at the end of the day, no one is immune to hard times. But at the same time, everyone has the capability and the ability to have hope. It can be difficult sometimes, for sure, 100%. But I also think that having hope makes life a little bit easier Having hope gives you that extra added little boost to do things and to do hard things and to not give up. So I think hope is really important. When he started out, he said, We are going to talk about hope with a declaration that we shall never lose it. And I just love that. I feel like the whole devotional, my jaw was just dropped. And it was just phenomenal to soak it all in in person and to soak it in from the teleprompters. I love words and I love subtitles, so I really enjoyed the teleprompters, I'm not gonna lie. I loved, loved, loved that part. And then of course I was sitting kind of close to him. He was right in front of me to the side, so I saw a perfect profile of his face. I was kind of at that angle, and because of that I was able to see the teleprompters. I really liked where I ended up sitting. I would have way rather that than sitting across from him and being able to see his face. Because I just watched the TV up above or the big screen that showed his face, that showed what everyone else in the world was seeing. I didn't really need to see his face like in person. If I wanted to, I could see his side profile. But I just watched that big screen and then looked at the teleprompters and that was awesome. He talked about stepping up and embracing your destiny. And one of the things also that stood out to me is he said, look to the future with joyful anticipation. I feel like that was kind of life-changing. How often do we look to the future and go, ugh, I have this coming up, or I have this coming up, or I need to do this, or I need to do that, or these are the errands I need to run. But in the grand scheme of things, the future is bright. The best is yet to come. The future is something we can look forward to with joyful anticipation. And I think that's wonderful and marvelous. The unfortunate thing is most people don't know this. Most people don't know that the future is marvelous and wonderful and that the best is yet to come. A lot of people don't know about our faith and what that entails and the blessings that will come. And rather they're just living life day by day. And I think that's a good way to live life too, day by day. But I think there's a special power that comes from knowing the end. And he talks about that too. That the prophets know the end, they know the plan, and they know who wins in the end. And in addition, Jesus Christ knows the end of the story. Kind of breaking from this, my mom is a type of person who needs to know what happens in a book or in a movie before she can watch it. She gets really stressed if she doesn't know how it's going to end. And so she'll look up the whole synopsis of a movie before we watch it. Or as we're watching it, she'll look it up so she knows what happens. She does the same thing when she reads books. If she's getting anxious about something, she will read the last chapter or the last page. If it seems interesting, she'll go back and finish the book. But if not, then she moves on because it's not worth wasting time reading bad books. You know, life is too short. 
Anyway, I think it's the same thing here. If we all get to look up the ending when we get nervous about how life is going right now, we can know and come back with 100% confidence and with a surety that the end is good. The end is victorious. There is a happily ever after. Elder Gong, his recent conference talk in October 2022, he talks about happily ever afters and how they're not a thing of fiction. They are very much a thing of reality and how we can have a happily ever after too if we follow Jesus Christ and if we give our lives to him. I think that's wonderful. I think it's I think it's spectacular and I obviously would love to follow him so that I can have my happily ever after and so that I can have a very joyful and fulfilling life. There are some other things that Elder and Sister Holland talk about. One of the things that he said that was also life-changing, once again, lots of the quotes here was life-changing. The whole thing was, he said, untested faith isn't much faith at all. And I loved that. I feel like that was so true and so astute. If we weren't tested with our faith, then there wouldn't really be much reason to have faith at all. There wouldn't really be much proof of faith because there would be nothing to ensure that we really truly do believe. We really truly do have hope and faith that things will work out and that the best is yet to come. In addition, he says, refuse to accept the world for what it appears to be. Shine your light on it and make it what it ought to be. This devotional was very focused on hope. And in addition to that, helping others and bringing the light of Christ to others and making the world what it ought to be. Sister Holland actually said, which was kind of mind-blowing, that we are the strongest, most righteous generation that the world has ever known. When she said that, there was like this moment of silence. And then she continued on, but it was it was incredible. I can't even imagine being told, I mean, it happened, being told that, your generation is the most righteous and strong generation and that we have the power to change the world. It's miraculous. If we all step up and embrace that and we all step up and make changes, then the world can truly be the place we want it to be, the place it ought to be, the place that it can be. She also talked about how she looked out into the room and she saw a light in this room that is so bright, talking about us and about the light we bring. And then she talks about holding up our light and talking about how Jesus Christ is the light to talk about Jesus Christ and to be more like him. My roommate gave a talk in church today and she talked about Jesus Christ being the author of our lives. She read it to me before church and asked me to kind of look over it and what I thought. And one of the things that she said towards the end felt like a plot twist, felt like a mind bender. And in church, I had already known it was coming, so it wasn't like, whoa, as it was when she read it before. But she was talking about how the Book of Mormon teaches of Jesus Christ. And although the book is about prophets and normal people and the Nephites and the anti-Nephi Lehites, and the Lamanites, and so on, and Moroni, and Mormon, that the book teaches of Jesus Christ, that the whole book's purpose is to teach people about Jesus Christ, and to bring people unto Jesus Christ. And she said, if you read the Book of Mormon, you'll learn more about Jesus Christ. Similarly, if you read a book about you, or someone else read a book about you, they would learn more about you. And then she said something that was the plot twist. She said, what if someone read a book about you, And through that book, they learned more about Jesus Christ, too. My mind was blown. It was like, whoa. It's totally possible that if you live your life in a way that Jesus Christ is constantly there and constantly present in your life and constantly influencing your decisions to be better and influencing you to grow, then people can totally learn about Jesus Christ through a book about you. And that's one of my goals, is to live my life in a way that people learn more about him or feel his love through me. I think it's such a wonderful and marvelous thing that we have the opportunity to do that. And we have the opportunity to do that because we have the knowledge of his plan and of his perfect gospel. Sister Han said that Jesus Christ had to bear the crown of thorns, so you don't have to. He did it so we could live joyfully. The gospel was never meant to be a mountain to climb. I think it's very true. If we are constantly striving to have hope and constantly striving to follow Jesus Christ, then we can live joyfully. We can live knowing that the end will be a happily ever after. We can live knowing that 
The gospel is never meant to be a mountain to climb, that the gospel can be a resource for joy and a resource for support and happiness, for community and for social growing and help us fill our social needs that we so desperately need in this life. I've talked about loneliness and I've talked about what it's like to not have that social support that you need. And it's detrimental to your health, to your emotional and your physical and mental health. And having a social support system is extremely important and it can help block stressors from happening in our lives. And when stressors do happen in our lives, it helps soften the blow from completely tearing us apart and sinking us under. Sister Holland talked about how our role in having hope is actually a very small portion of our job. And God and Heavenly Father has the majority of the gift. He has the majority of the gift of hope. It's his plan that is giving us hope. And all we have to do is believe in him and follow him. And if we do that, then hope is totally possible. And the idea and the proof that the best is yet to come will be 100% true. Let go of our personal desperation of this life and our personal despair and confusion and anguish and seek rest in the Lord. And that our hearts will always be restless until they rest with God, until they rest with Him. And in them, we can find true and everlasting rest. I've experienced this in my own life. I really have. I think there's a power when you turn over your stresses and your hardships to him and you say, I trust you. I know you'll take care of me. My roommate also talked about how even if we trust him, that doesn't mean that hard things aren't going to happen in our lives. If you read a book, you know that there has to be conflict in the book in order for it to be interesting. If everything worked out all the time, the book would not be very interesting. There wouldn't be anything to get over or anything to learn about any growth happening. And so because of the hard things and because of the experiences the character has that aren't easy, the character grows and changes and then there's this wonderful character arc. It's the same with us and she says that, my roommate says that. In order for us to grow and to become more like him, we need to have these experiences of conflict so that we can have our own personal character arc. But keeping that in mind that hard things will come, God is still our father He does have a plan for us. Heavenly Father and Jesus Christ will take care of us. They know us. They'll carry us and deliver us. And they will always, always, always do their part in fulfilling their promises to us. I understand from a very personal standpoint that keeping our promises or trusting in Him and handing our trials and our stresses over to Him is not easy. It's much easier said than done. Giving things over to him is not something you can do by snapping your fingers or by saying a prayer and hoping everything works out. It's a constant and conscious effort to continually be trusting him and to continually be giving our hearts to him and to trust that he'll help us and that he will give us rest and help our hearts be at peace knowing that the ending is happy and everything will work out. I kind of want to end with one of these things that, once again, so amazing. Everything was amazing. She said that with this light in our hearts and with the light that we carry, our mortal ministry, our latter-day ministry, is to carry the torch of hope, carry the light of Christ to those stuck in the dark. And that we can bear this light in a way that all of the darkness in the world cannot distinguish it. And once again... Elder Holland said, light always overcomes darkness forever and ever and ever. He added that last part. It was not on the teleprompter that forever and ever and ever. It simply said, light always conquers darkness. He added forever and ever and ever. It was a very, very powerful moment, especially when I read the teleprompter and realized that he had added that himself. With such a gusto and such a passion that you could just tell he believed it with all of his heart and soul and mind. They closed by saying that miracles will come in our lives when we slow down, we kneel down, and we trust him. And one day, if we believe and if we follow him, the best is yet to come because all the Father has will one day be yours. It's miraculous. It's truly miraculous. And I don't think our brains can properly comprehend the amount of blessings and the joy that we can feel in our life and in the future. The word of the day, 
I was looking for one that could fit with this topic, and the word of the day is replete. It's an adjective. It means filled or well supplied with something. I want to be replete with hope. I want to be filled. I want to be well supplied with hope and to share that hope with others and to replete others with hope. I think I might have used that wrong because it's not a verb. It is an adjective, but I want to replete with hope. I want to be very full and sated by hope and by the knowledge that joy is possible and that the future is filled with unlimited and unimaginable joy. I hope that that's your goal too, to be replete with happiness, to be replete with joy, to be replete with hope, and to know that everything will work out. And if it's not working out, then it's not the end. Your story's not over yet. The quote of the day, and I already said this, but I'm going to read it again. Elder Holland said, hope on, pray always, and be believing. I think that quote perfectly fits the entire message that Elder and Sister Holland shared. That hope is possible, that we can continue to hope, that we can continue to pray, and that we can continue to believe. And those three things are the key and the recipe for success and the recipe for trusting in him and having a successful and wonderful and restful life. Having a life filled with rest. I don't know if restful is a word. But having a life filled with rest and having a life filled with peace of mind and peace of heart. I know with all of my heart that we are divine and that he has a plan for each and every one of us. That he knows us and that he will take care of us. Our character arcs can be more beautiful and more wonderful than we can even imagine. And that we can even comprehend. So I challenge you to trust him. To pick one thing that's happening in your life and turn it over to him. And once again, it is not easy. I struggled with turning it over to him for years and years and years. And every once in a while I have a relapse where I'm like, ah! It's too stressful to give it to him. I want to hold on to this for a little bit. And then I realize that that's not true. That giving it over to him and trusting is much more pleasant than holding on to the stresses of this life. So, that being said, I'm really grateful for the opportunity to share this message with you today. Thank you, thank you, thank you for listening. Embrace imperfection. Find meaning, satisfaction, and joy from the journey. I'm Kyra, and this is Imperfectly Broken, the podcast. Do, 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 do.